Diversification is one of the most important rules in finance. Interestingly, this concept and this very important concept in finance does not take roots in finance, but it takes roots in literature. So you must have heard of the saying that don't put all your eggs in one basket. This proverb is used by Don Quixote by Miguel de Cervantes where the phrase is used and it reads, is the part of a wise man to keep himself today for tomorrow and not venture all his eggs in one basket. That is where this term that don't put all your eggs in one basket comes from and this is not a finance concept. Now it's used in finance and it is one of the principal concepts that you need to understand if you want to succeed in the stock markets. So on this video, I'm going to cover four simple points about diversification. That what exactly is diversification? Number two, that with the advent of cryptocurrencies, how you should diversify your investment portfolio. Number three, we are going to take a look at that if you have a capital of 10,000 or 1 lakh or 10 lakhs, how you should diversify and how you should create that investment pie. How much should be allocated in stocks versus how much should be allocated in debt versus cryptocurrencies. Finally, I'm going to leave you with some key points that you should remember by uncovering your own investment style. So let's get this video started. Now, very quick word about our sponsors from the video, which is CoinSwitch Kuber, without whom this video would not have been possible. Now, they are a crypto investment platform. They help you buy and sell cryptocurrencies. They have a wonderful UI UX. They also run a blog called as Kuberverse, where you can learn more about crypto investment and educate yourself. So many of you might be tempted to comment that, hey, Akshat, you would advocate investing in cryptocurrencies. Number one, I am already a big investor in cryptocurrencies, but I would never advocate anyone to allocate more than 5 to 10% of their entire portfolio in cryptocurrencies because that is precisely what even I am doing, right? So I'll advocate only things that I do. I will advocate the same things to you. So first and foremost, let us understand that what is the meaning of diversification and why is diversification important? So diversification essentially means your investments should look like a pie. It should be bifurcated into different investment classes. For example, you can have some percentage of your portfolio into equities, right? Equities are what? Equities are shares of the companies or businesses that you are buying. You will have some portfolio in debt. You should have some portfolio in real estate. You should have some portfolio in cryptos. You should have some portfolio in new age instruments like cryptos. Now, let me quickly explain that why is it that diversification is very, very, very important. You must have heard of stories in India like this that, hey, I bought a flat on an EMI and I regularly pay an EMI of 25,000 monthly. I bought this flat three years ago and I've been paying my EMI regularly, but my builder has not given me possession. If you would have heard of such stories, do drop your answers in the comment because I myself have heard these stories. In fact, few of my close friends have gone through this horrid experience where they are paying EMIs on loans for the houses that they have acquired, but they have not been given possessions of those houses. So this becomes a massive problem and this becomes like a back breaking problem if you have invested almost all your money in buying such a house. So what you're doing in that scenario is that your investment pie looks like this real estate that 100% of your investment is a house that's it you don't have any other investment be it stock be it gold be it cryptocurrencies etc and this can become a massive problem for you if something bad happens to this real estate or the piece of asset or investment that you're holding this is the first key reason why your investment portfolio needs to be diversified it needs to be bifurcated into different asset classes now the second important point about diversification is that diversification can actually give you hedging benefits so what that means is that you might have heard that you know in some years the gold moves up right it is going up it is going up then it stabilizes for a few years then it comes down in the same year, so for example, let's assume, and I'm hy making hypothetical numbers. So let's say that between 2010 to 2014, this was a scenario with gold cycle, but you also invested in Nifty, right? And Nifty went up like this. So in this period, while the gold mostly stayed stable, your Nifty or your stock investments, your stock and mutual fund investments, they kind of increased. So if you're diversified, you have bought like 25, 30% stocks of your overall portfolio, and only 15% gold, then this particular asset, this particular asset 
hedges asset B, right? So that is the benefit of diversification. Therefore, A, you should diversify across asset classes, asset classes, and even within the same asset, you must diversify. For example, if you are buying stocks, then don't just buy one single stock and be done with it. Diversify and buy a bunch of stocks. Now, I'm not saying that go and buy 50 stocks, but there is a good diversification number that you should adopt in your portfolio, given the size of your portfolio. So in conclusion, if you're putting all your eggs in one basket and if you're not diversifying and if that basket falls, all your eggs or majority of your eggs will break, which is a bad situation. You should not put yourself in that situation. What you should do is that you should invest across different asset classes and within each asset class, you must also diversify. So this allows you to hedge your risk. Now let us very quickly cover major asset classes across which you can invest. So there are five major asset classes that you can use to diversify your investments. Number one is equities. Equities are that you are buying businesses. So you are buying ITC or HUL or if you are buying a stock of Bajaj Finance, what are you doing? You are essentially buying a business. Right? So you are buying equity and ownership in a particular company, super easy to understand. And if you are buying equity oriented mutual funds, your money again gets invested in companies like HUL, ITC and a bunch of other businesses. So that's one. The second asset class is debt. Debt means that you are investing in debt instruments. So debt instruments are instruments which are giving loan to other people. For example, there are big companies and governments that take loans from people, right? They call it bonds. So government will issue a bond and you as an investor will get a chance to loan out your money to the government and government will pay you a rate of interest. So are you an owner of the government? No, right? You're just giving a loan to the government. Therefore, you are investing in a debt, not equity. In equity, you become an owner. So this is the second asset class. The third asset class is real estate. Super simple. If you are buying commercial property or if you are buying rental property, then you are buying real estate. Now, if you want me to make a separate video, do comment on the real estate. I will definitely make a very detailed video on that topic. Fourth is commodity. So if you want to invest in oil or if you want to invest in gold, silver, these are commodities. Now, the problem with commodity is that number one, taking physical delivery of commodity is very difficult. For example, if you buy physical gold, then storing it, handling it safely, that becomes a challenge. So you should try to buy these in a digital format. That might be much more simpler. When the idea is that the commodities can give you hedging benefits. For example, when the stock market goes down, people look for safe heavens and they start investing in gold. So gold prices go up. So if you have invested in gold at that point in time, you, whatever loss you're making in the stock market, you end up making benefits from your gold market. So therefore you should diversify. Fifth and final asset class that I would outline are cryptocurrencies. So cryptocurrencies are Bitcoin, Ethereum, and these new age investment instruments. These could be NFTs as well. So what happens with cryptocurrencies is that you're taking a long term perspective on the world. Now I'm not saying that go and invest 90% of your salary in cryptocurrencies. Please don't do that. That is madness. But what you should do is that you should keep a little bit of portion of your entire investment amount for these future assets. Because right now the cryptocurrency market is like this much and the stock market is like this much. Now, if the crypto market grows to become like stock market 30, 40 years ahead in the future, then the value that you're holding might become 50x or 100x. That is a huge return on your 5 to 10% portfolio. So I hope you understand the available options for you. Now, let me quickly show in a very brief format that what you should do if you have 10 lakh rupees, how you should go about designing your investment portfolio. Now, if you have 10 lakh rupees, then you need to ask yourself a couple of questions. One is that what is your age, right? And second is that what is your risk appetite? Now, if you're generally young, then you should invest more of your money for growth, right? If you are slightly old, then you should invest majority of your money for what? For regular withdrawals. So you're looking at stable income flows, right? So for example, invest in dividend oriented stocks because you are getting monthly cash flows and you can utilize that to live your life. That's it. Second, if you have age by your side, then you can withstand the dips in the stock market. For example, in 2020, when the stock market went down and hypothetically speaking, if it would have taken 10 years for the stock market recovery to happen, and if you have age on your side, then you can stay put. No problem, right? The stock market will come up. And if you don't have age on your side, and if some medical emergency comes up when the stock market is down, then you will have to sell your stocks at a massive loss to recoup the investment. So that becomes a bad scenario. So generally speaking, if you're young, then you should invest in growth assets. 
and if you are old then you should invest in stable assets that's the general rule that's one second thing that you need to superimpose this rule with your risk appetite for example if you are someone who is a risky investor then you can allocate more of your funds towards equity cryptocurrencies etc if you are somewhat of a risk free investor then you should allocate most of your money in debt fund in fixed deposits things like that so please ask yourself these two questions that at what age you are and what is your risk appetite now let me create two profiles and try to outline how you should go about designing your portfolio so let's assume that you are in your 20s and you are a balanced investor that is neither you are too risky and neither you are too risk averse right so this is the first category we will build a portfolio for and second category we can assume that people are in their 40s people are in their late 40s or early 50s and they too are balanced investors right why am i not talking about like extreme cases why i'm not talking about extremely risky people because they should just go and invest all their money in cryptos and if we are talking about extremely risk free people they should just do fds right so we are talking about people who are mostly in the middle of course i can't give you an age wise segregation so just play along with these numbers and the general rules that i'm talking about so essentially what you should do is that you are looking to grow your wealth right when you are in your 20s early 30s or when you are slightly younger so what you should do is that you should have 60 to 70% money in equities 10% in debt depending on the market condition if the market conditions look stable or if the market is in growth phase the way it is now keep very little debt invest mostly in equities in terms of commodity i personally do not own any commodities use commodities purely for hedging so you can buy gold and silver so the stock market tanks you can use commodities to hedge that risk and remainder should be in growth capital like cryptos which are the next gen finance so to say you might say that here actually two points one is that you have not spoken about real estate so i am personally not too bullish on real estate market now if you hold a lot of black cash and you know all that stuff it's a different thing but market in india about real estate it involves a lot of frictional cost lot of taxes bunch of different things so i personally would not invest a lot of money in real estate i do own a few commercial properties but that makes a very little part of my entire investment portfolio that's one second is that akshat can you exactly tell us what are you doing so i am 90% here and i am 10% here that's it right but that's me right i am a slightly more risky investor so that is why i am following this philosophy that's a second i'm good at futures and options so if the market falls i know how i can make money right so as to offset any of the losing equity positions so therefore i'm confident about stock market bets that i'm making therefore i invest heavily in equities and cryptos this is something that i have said multiple times okay now let's move on to scenario b if you are someone who requires a regular income flow then majority of your money should go into debt right at least 40 to 50% should go into debt and in terms of equity you should do at least 30 to 40% right and even in equity you should only go with large stable blue chip companies that's it okay the idea is what the idea is to reduce volatility should you invest in cryptos i don't think so right because crypto as a market it will take long time to stabilize it has massive return potential therefore i am also investing my money in it but the volatility in the crypto market is going to be high going forward therefore you should only invest in stable sources so what i would say is that 50 30 and then you should take little bit of commodity bets at 10 to 20% that's it and you are good to go so this is what i would say about developing your own investment portfolio now fourth and final part what are some of the key things that you should keep in mind number 1 if you are a risky investor then equity and cryptocurrencies are a great bet for you but always hedge always hedge your risks either learn about futures and options so even if you are make, taking a loss on your equity positions you have some way of hedging that or invest in commodities those are some of the hedging techniques that's a number 2 please do not look at your house as an investment okay because if you are living in a house and if you get habitual to living in a house and you are very happy that my house now is worth 5 crores it's very unlikely that you are going to sell it and move some place else right so please don't consider your house in which you are living as an investment per se you buy a house for living so do not consider it as an investment investment in traditional sense third point is that if you are a risk free investor and if you say that he akshat i am just too scared of taking risk what you should do number 1 please invest a little bit of your money in fd and please trust me that please go and invest your money in passive mutual funds you will be okay not a problem right just make monthly sips and you will do well i will come out with a video about dollar cost averaging or rupee cost averaging please watch that that will help you understand more about passive fund index investing so please watch that 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up and a comment and I'll see you the next time.